season for the season, right? And as I was looking for at the uh, worship team this morning with all the reds, uh, it reminded me of Christmas. Malapit na sa Pilipinas nga, di ba pag uh, pumasok ng ber, September, October, yan, Pasko na yan. May mga parul na, may mga karuling, oh, wala pa namang karuling. Pero nagsisimula ng Pasko, Christmas starts early in the Philippines. It's interesting because we are so tempted to put up our Christmas decors because um, two blocks down, we have a neighbor that has his um, Halloween stuff up since two weeks ago. So I was like, hmm, maybe we should put up our Christmas stuff. You know, but then we have to remember, what is the reason for the season, right? What is it about? Today, we will be learning about the festivals, the Jewish festivals. Um, I know our kids love it because every time there's a Jewish festival, they're off of school. Parents are like, well, we're not really Jewish, so why, why should we celebrate this? But you know what? Our Lord chose the Israelite people. Amen? So we need to understand, we need to learn, we need to know what these Jewish holidays are for. In, it's interesting because in the Old Testament, uh, as we continue in our 40-week journey, if you go to the next slide, um, we have been going through the Aleph Tav, and then we learned about Jesus in the Old Testament. In the last few weeks, we learned about His redemptive work as revealed in the tabernacle, right? the Holy of Holies, and the Holy Place. And then today we continue to learn about the revelation of Jesus in the Old Testament through the seven annual Jewish feasts according to the book of Leviticus. There are seven Jewish feasts or feasts outlined or festivals outlined in the Bible. Although they are mentioned all throughout the scripture, we will find instructions for all seven of them in one chapter all seven of them together, in Leviticus chapter 23. In Leviticus 23 verse 2, refers to the seven Jewish festivals, and literally it says, the appointed times, also called holy convocations. And let's read that. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 2, it says, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. They are, these are the Lord's appointed festivals, which you are to proclaim as official days for a holy assembly. Panginoon po nag-atas na itong mga araw na to. It wasn't days that, you know, they just picked out of the calendar. Okay, let's let's celebrate on this day. You know, parang, I remember when we would go to, this was in college before I knew the Lord. We would go to a rest, certain restaurant and we would say it's somebody's birthday even though it wasn't their birthday. Just so we have the free dessert. So, thank God I am redeemed of that. And uh, <laughs> along with that came the wait. Cut. <laughs> so praise God. We have to remember that sometimes, you know, things in the world, it, it's like, Lord, but in alo yung mga bagay na to. It's for us to learn things. So the celebrations themselves, they mean so much. They mean so much. These times of celebration are important not only to Israel, but also to the overall message of the Bible. Sometimes when we read through it, pag binabasa natin parang. I, I, maybe I can just skip Leviticus numbers, right? Just skip to the nice parts where it's, you know, you got the story of Ruth and all these other things. But it's amazing when you sit there and read and listen to the Word of God. Because each of the, of the celebrations, each of the festivals foreshadows or symbolizes an aspect of life, an aspect of death, an aspect of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing. The book of Leviticus contains God's instructions to His chosen nation, Israel, on how they were to worship God. It includes, it's basically a manual teaching us, teaching the priests on how to do things. But it's also uh, a guidance to the people of Israel in regarding to you know what God does, His provision in the coming of the Messiah, so that the re- the redemption that Jesus has is shown, foreshadowed, typified in these particular celebrations. Even though, as Christians, we are no longer oblig- obliged to observe the Old Testament feasts, we need to understand them. 
It says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, if we have this slide. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink, for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. Verse 17, for these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. They're only shadows. And Christ himself is that reality. Gaya po nung mga traffic sign na nakikita natin when we look at the traffic signs, that by itself does not have any value to it. What has value is what it represents. So the festivals themselves, if you do not understand the value to it, you would ignore it. You would not participate in it. But when you look at the Word of God, it reveals that Jesus is in these festivals. Amen? It says in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until He reveals His plans to His servants and His prophets. This is why when He commanded Moses to write down these festivals and how to do them, He wrote down every single thing and they had to follow it to the letter. It has to be the right season, the right time. You see, from the Old Covenant to the New, from Genesis to the Revelation, God provides picture after picture of His entire plan for mankind. Leviticus 23, although it's an instruction book, it's also a very prophetic book. If you go to the next slide, the Hebrew word for feast or feasts is moadim. It means appointed time. It's also the same meaning or the same word for the tent of meeting. Right? Remember the tent of meeting from Moses? Appointed times show us that God is in control. It shows us that God is a God of order. It shows us that these seasons, these times, these festivals point to something greater. Gaya po na sinabi ng Panginoon, in the future, right? In the book of Revelations, we may not know the day or the hour, but there will be signs of His coming. And guess what? Before Jesus came, He already gave us the signs of His coming through the festivals. If you look at the next slide, you will see here that the festivals that, that you see here this is the whole Jewish calendar. And you can see that the calendar starts on Nisan. That's the first month of the year. We have the spring festivals, which is a Passover, unleavened bread, the first fruits. And then 50 days after the first fruits, you have the seventh month, Sivan, uh, for the Pentecost. And then you have the fall feasts. Today, we will talk about the first three feasts of the spring festival. You see, the first three feasts, the first four feasts of the seven feasts occurred during the springtime, and that's including the the weeks, which is Pentecost. The final three holidays occurs in the fall. And many, many Bible scholars and commentators say that the first four already happened. Everything that happened in the spring festival was what Jesus did when he came the first time. And then everything in the fall festival is what's going to happen when he comes the second time. Amen? This is why everything needs to happen in its particular day and hour and season. This way, the prophets, the people can understand when indeed God comes. As I said before in Mark chapter 13, verse 32, it says, However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. Only the Father knows. 
This is why today we need to take a survey of the first three spring festivals and the spiritual and prophetic significance of each of these Levitical Jewish feasts. What's really interesting, if you go back to that picture of the calendar, is the first three occur back to back. Halos patong patong, halos sabay sabay. Right? The Feast of Unleavened Bread starts the very day the Passover is celebrated. And then on the second day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits begin. So in about three days or so, everything happens all together. Sounds familiar. Three days. Sounds familiar. So today the Word of God shows that the Spring Feasts points to Jesus revealing what? The finished work of the cross. Amen? It's a finished work of the cross. Next slide. The Word of God shows that the spring feast of the Passover points to Jesus as the sacrificial lamb. Passover, that festival, points to Jesus as the sacrificial lamb. In Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 to 8, the Lord's Passover begins at sundown on the 14th day of the first month. If we go to the next slide, we'll see that Passover comes from the Hebrew word Pesach. Pesach. Hindi po pinesa. Season. It comes in, it's in the spring season from March to April. Right? That's about March to April. Uh, in the month of Nisan, the first month, hindi po Nisan yung sasakyan, the 14th day of that month. And the, the, that Passover itself is just one day. It's one day. You see, Passover reminds us of what? Redemption of sin. Redemption from sin. It was a time when Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was offered as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You have to remember that only God can truly give us a perfect lamb for sacrifice. Because man's sacrifice is never perfect. Of all the festivals, Passover is the most important of all. It signifies the Lord's Supper. Amen? In Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 to 20, and then 26 to 29, on the first day of the festival of what? The unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Remember I said, halos patong patong to, on the same day. Passover and the unleavened bread. They're about the same day. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare what? The Passover meal for you. As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him that the teacher says, my time has come and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. This is what we celebrated earlier the communion table. Verse 27, he took the cup of wine and gave thanks. Actually, 26, sorry. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. And then he took the cup of wine, gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, eat, each of you drink from it. This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people, poured out for a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And then that night he said, in verse 29, Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Hallelujah. See, the old covenant in the Old Testament, God was already showing Moses that he would establish this communion with man. It also showed that God is going to be the sacrifice himself. You see, in this particular verse, in this particular scripture, 
The Old Covenant, the Passover meal, was a memorial celebration of Israel's deliverance from Egypt. But by transforming...